All right, here we are. Say hi. Hi. Uh, this is Terry. I'm Drew. <laughs> this is our first time, but we've known each other for about 20 years, yeah. maybe 30. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, it's only one mine, so you're never that far away. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the back streets are happening between Occidental and where you're on Sebastopol. What's the starts with the T? You're like on the corner or you're near. Oh, that's Trenton Road. Trenton. Like if, Trenton, if, yeah. If you're going <clears throat> from, uh, yeah. from River Road, yeah. Hey, remember this one?
Yeah, pretty easy to play with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, this is cool. This mother, man, I'm loving it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give me another one, man. This is great. First time, baby. Yeah. 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 Oh, come on, don't go, don't want to take two bites. Wait. Bang, bang, loop, loop. I can scout with you all day long. so many genres and so many feelings <laughs> it's like that's kind of one of the things I'm loving about doing this podcast is just you know I'm just going to play everything from Bill Black Combo uh, 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 what's his face so, uh, anyway all my er old early influences yeah. so it's green just, Bill Doggett, that's what yeah, I was saying. Bill Doggett, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was a kid, so, you know, what happened to me was, um, you know, I was noodling around, playing with this goofball guy that was doing all Circle of Fate stuff, you know, mm -hmm. rhythm. And uh, we went to the Fillmore, and we went to see ELP, uh, Merson mm -hmm. Lake and Palmer. Oh, yeah. But guess who opened for him? Mahavishnu Orchestra. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Sean McLaughlin. Oh, uh, and it just, the, the funny thing is, all they could do was turn up the volume for ELP. I mean, mm -hmm. they were a good show and they're a great band. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like... Oh, they were that, uh, they were so amazing. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Eric Jones is a really good friend of mine. And so Eric's played with uh, with uh, John. Yeah. But he yeah. was on his last album, actually. Yeah, yeah. he's great. Yeah, I mean, I just, so I just kind of got into that, and the, my sound guy goes, you'll never play like him, you know, so, I'm going. Well, you know, that's one way of thinking, that's, yeah. but it's, it's, you know, fuck it. Yeah, I just want to do this, really, you know, I, I've been sequestered pretty much my whole life, mm -hmm. I haven't gotten out much, because I've been in film, and doing film with mm -hmm. John, and, and, you know, writing for scores, and things like that, and doing it all out of New Zealand and China, and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Remember this one? This you know Gil Roswell? Mark Roswell? No. Yeah, he's a 
movie guy, pretty, pretty well established. Yeah. Stuff. He does a lot of stuff with Denzel, and he he just did this for thing, uh, uh, Tunes Map. I think he just sold it to uh, Apple. Yeah. Was, yeah. Solo, brother. Solo. You can, it's easy. recognizing a lot of stuff that may be way above your head but it's like one of the things I've always loved us I've pretty much been you know pretty simple-minded Buddhist you know renunciate of most things and uh, but all my friends say all of us go if we didn't know better we would just assume that you were raised like us. Yeah, here we are. <laughs> B, I think, is a key word. Yeah, know? I think that's it. Really. It's so true. You know, it's, I, I just see, you know, it, right now where I'm evolving is I was always leaning forward, you know, mm. into things to lead, to mm. inspire. And what I've now come to That's your energy. Into, and I've settled into just listening. Mm -hmm. And and then if somebody has a question for me, I'm more than happy to give back. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's for now, as a, as I matured and seasoned, is it's a it's a good thing, you know. It seems to me the thing that I've learned the most is that things need things need. I don't know if you'd call it leadership. But because things change relationships depending on what they are. But you have to be able to take direction from somebody else if you really feel that that's, you know, serving something or you or whatever your perspective is. And you also have to be able to take responsibility for whatever knowledge. Not that, man! <laughs> 
Oh, uh, yeah. No, 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 no well, responsibility. Well, what? Well, no, <laughs> no, if, you, if, if, if you're looking at the really big thing, that, that's the complex thing only because it requires knowing people in it. Yeah. And, and being able to intuit something about a real quality of somebody else's life that puts them in the same place as you. You know, because that's the only way you ever really make those connections. And from working with dying people for so long, mm -hmm. you just really learn that. Evolution, man. Well, if you if you get to the point where you need words, you're way, you know, you're, you're not where the event is happening. Yeah. You know, and so that's the thing you've got to cultivate the most. Oh. It's just like... Well, that's about as pure as I, I... I think I'm glad I came to see you. <laughs> Well, man, I'm going to try this quite a bit, so it's good. Oh, shoot. Um, um, check this one out. Let's see. No.
was fun. That was uh, that's Comienzo. I wrote that long time ago. It's a fun one though, because nice. we know. need a bossa nova band behind you with a little funkier bass. Yeah. 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 Shh, don't tell anybody we're talking about Gary Brown. <coughs> that's Gary. <laughs> <laughs> really sweet. Well, thanks for taking the risk and coming over. <laughs> oh, was, what a drive, though, I'm telling you. It was so wonderful to see this area, you know, because of, my sister's been in Occidental for 45 years, mm. you know, right off Joy Road, right off, right. you go Joy to Lori and then make a left on Joy Ridge. Mm -hmm. She's got a huge spiritual center there. No, right that's there? great up there, too. I pick a lot of mushrooms up there. Those nice, nice, yeah. Ah. Well, no, my chanterelles and stuff. That's a big area for him, so. But yeah, no, I've got, here in the yard already, I've inoculated a whole bunch of states, places with sign essence. Boom. Yeah, that's a really, I think, I have, I, I did one, uh, we did one a while back, and and uh, I, I turned into Jack Nicholson. I was the grounding agent, and here I am, you know, talking like Jack and being Jack, and yeah. okay, everything's going to be fine now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Forget all that other stuff. Yeah, he's going to be Present fun. time. <laughs> oh, wow. That was so nice, Jeff. Yeah, well, too. Again, thanks. Um, yeah, uh, if if I edit this, do you, are you interested in having me get you, give you some publicity and we share and I'll take out any of the bad stuff? Oh, well, I mean, to me, it's all pretty, pretty rough in the sense that it's, you know, I've been playing all this electric guitar and playing all this blues and stuff yeah. and, got, and it's like, Oh, I've actually got to pick everything. Oh, i got to practice. <laughs> yeah. I had a fly for a long time. You know, that that's fly is the most amazing recording instrument. Did they widen the neck? Because mine was, this was 20 years ago when it first came out. This is one of the very newest ones. I mean, okay. oldest ones. You know what? Let me, let me but just. This, see. Has got, this has got a nice, nice, pretty wide neck. Yeah, because the other neck they had was too narrow, and I had to give it away. Because um, I can make this thing sound like anything in the world. Oh, yeah, they widened the neck. Big time, yeah. So, like, if I'm doing tracks and stuff, I'll lay down rhythm things with us. And... Uh, yeah, that that back pickup thing. This the piezo like the acoustic, you know, but you can blend it in, you know, yeah, and get that twang. But yeah, this is a wider neck. Yeah, and this one, this one rings like. Yeah, it's actually a pretty good guitar. Yeah, it's strong. It's heads. You you play heavy. You do. This is heavy for me. Oh, I break them off. Too. I break them off too. It's, it's like when I, I'm actually at a gig, you know, yeah. without heavy strings, you know. I've had times where, when I used to trip and play, where I'd get so far into it and, and I'd go, ah, and I'd break two strings at once. Uh oh. <laughs> I've never done that. Never broken two strings at once, ever. Yeah. No, yeah. you get pretty amped up, but like I used to yeah. get really, really <laughs> pretty amped up. Yeah, this is sweet, dude. Yeah, and you got it tight. You got it right where it should be. Yeah. I had Gary Brower working on it. I didn't, couldn't find anybody else that could actually work on it. Yeah. Gary did all my stuff when yeah. I, I had him do. Uh, I have a Yamaha SGV fifteen hundred. Um, way back when, and I, I specifically use it for playing Song of the Wind. Do you remember Song of the Wind from Caravan Sarai? Kind of. Neil Schoen's way in. Oh, oh right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, what character he is. Oh, yeah. yeah I love I'm him. Not, yeah. Well, I love Miles. You know, I like Neil, too. But yeah. Don't ever sit in the car with Neil and have him play any of his tracks unless you got earphones. Yeah. Oh, I, I like Quiet. I've been saving him. Oh, yeah, well, you know, it's so interesting because the reason I quit the Suns was because we had my friend Zero did the sound, mm -hmm. and uh, we lost our old sound guy who wasn't very good, and so Zero was 
both mixing and road managing. Quincy. Oh, that's work. And but God, he just had that Quincy sounding so great with the big band, you know. And uh, so he decided to come and mix for the Suns. Okay. And uh, one of the first things he said, and, and Bill and I were having problems anyway because he was really pretty. A lot of cocaine, a lot of alcohol, and bad for you know bad yeah. for the air. It is, and, and I, I just couldn't hang with that. But the straw was that we played so loud. It, you know, you get so cranked up and everything gets so loud. And after a few gigs, Zero came and he said, "You know, I can make it sound a lot better if you didn't play as loud." The stage. And yeah. yeah, Bill fired him. And I said, "Okay, that's it. I quit." I'm going. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I like a quiet stage. I really do. I. I uh... You know, I just recently bought this QSC 2000 watt 10 inch monitor mm -hmm. and it's unbelievable. I mean, this little guy is a little tiny guy. Mm -hmm. It's a 10 inch speaker and uh, I can put my vocals. I have this thing that I can harmonize the vocal and the guitar talks to it. So right. I can change, like I do a three part vocal. Mm -hmm. If I mean, if I play A first, it sees the A and then harmonize if I play a minor, it does a minor, and if I play a diminished, it'll do the diminished vocal triad, you know, bo -do -da. and I'm like going, this is too much, man. It's following my guitar. And, I used to have know. something like that, and I'm a really a lot of fun. Yeah. Like, Especially like, tracking and making things. Yeah, yeah. It's just freaking great, man. Lots of shit would come out. I had no idea what it was. And well, nor, here nor we could are. I recreate it. But <laughs> here we are with the master. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for letting me come out and hang. It, you've, you've inspired me to do something that um, the last time I did this was with, with Bill Connors. Mm, Bill Connors. Years Very ago, right? Yeah. But we didn't have video back then. And we talked all about, you know, all the stories. And, mm. you know, like we have kind of a cross because, you know, I did Buddy Miles and all that family and then the Taz and all that family and then Palo Alto. And John Handy was my dad, jazz dad. Yeah. And he passed away like we was just he lived to be like in his late nineties. I know I had so many friends. Like when I when I was really, you know, actually real full on making money, uh I had a friend Kerry Payne who lived in Palo Alto and he was a wine broker, him and Dennis Foley. Okay. And uh <clears throat> because I had such good herb, they introduced <laughs> me to the uh Duvelines, the people that own Rom Romani Conti. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, whenever the Doolins would come to this country, they'd uh, get in touch with me. Yes, uh, man. They, well, no, <laughs> no. They, they'd say, we want to trade the Conti for the Conti. <laughs> and of course. <laughs> there you go. But that, that, they were really nice because if, if you go, go to have dinner, they always had this huge collection of DRC wines. And you could have a nice dinner, drink a couple of bottles of wine, or you could sit there all night and drink wine, depending yeah. on if you could recognize the bottle of wine that he opened and uh -huh. you were drinking. Oh, that's great. And if you didn't, you know, he'd usually start with some simple issues of those, you know, the, you know, okay years, you know. And, uh, but then, you know, as it got further and further and further into it and stuff. More, more know, complex. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's that's fantastic. No, that's I had I had uh, <laughs> I was lucky enough through them to be able to buy uh, a few cases of the the seventy one Latosh, and I bought two magnums mm -hmm. of it because my son was born then, and uh, I ended up se selling the two magnums to Kim Jong Il. Oh, really? Yeah, for. Uh, for uh, twenty million. No, no, about twenty two thousand dollars a bottle. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, that was for the. For you could the probably have doubled it, not a problem though. You but know. Uh, you know, I look back on that saying, "Yeah, I remember that life. That was kind of far out." <laughs> yeah. yeah, we. I mean, the funny thing was, was I back then uh, I was in this band called Del Pompadour. And then Sean Anna dropped in, so I, I they wanted me to play with him. Yeah. So I said, yeah, I'll, I'll play with you. You know, it's I can do all this and all this, all the you know, I can talk like I'm saying like whole thing, you know. And 
And about three weeks into it, I was done. Yeah. Too much, just too much consumption, man. I couldn't handle it. No, yeah, yeah. no, no I know the, uh, yeah. I'm trying to remember his name now. It was the, uh, he's a lawyer now, and uh, he was actually uh, assistant to uh, Herbie Herbert's main guy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but he was also one of the lead singers in Shaman Rock. So. Which one was it? Do you know? Dark hair guy, you know. Bob Bowser. Sure, yeah. Bob Bowser. I don't know if, uh, you know, could, they were rotating mm -hmm. lots of cats, you know. I just, Katie knows everybody from uh, having, you know, she knows all the guys in Butch Wax. And, oh, God, and Blast Pack. She, she had all her, her see, shows. Yeah, see, know. that's all like, my sister is 72. Mm -hmm. See, so she's a lot older than I am, yeah. and she was like the nomads, uh, Paul Revere and the Raiders, all mm -hmm. those guys were playing in our backyard. Yeah. How walked we, we do have a party, and <clears throat> my dad would walk around, and and we had a big backyard in the back, and he'd walk around catching all the kids drinking and making out, and and he was on, he broke his leg, and and he, and they'd say, don't let Don catch you, he'll wrap those crutches around your neck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was funny. My dad was uh, he worked for Howard Hughes. Yeah. And then his father did all the art department. He was the art department for Howard Hughes. And how they built a plane was they would draw a plane and build it. Right. Because they had, well, engineering was a little bit different there, except for like spruce gooses and big, yeah. super big giant things. Yeah. But they would just yeah. see if it would fly. You know? Well, I played all the cotillion balls for the longest time there in Atherton uh, with uh, Del Courtney. And. Uh, you know, that's when I was really sharp and, you know, had all my custom-made suits and everything. And But then all these people would come up to me later and when I was in the sun say, you remember that cotillion ball and played? And, I love you! <laughs> and so I said, well, you know, I'd always say the same thing. Well, looks like it didn't work out the way your dad wanted it to. <laughs> oh, Good for shoot. You. Good for you. Well, Terry... <laughs> Pleasure, man. Um, I try to get up here and see you again. Maybe we can do figure out a little set or something and play something on the. Sure, find a place.